In our last notes on vectors, we're taking a look at something called the triple scalar product, which is when you take three vectors, you take the cross product of two of them, and then take that resulting vector, because remember when you find a cross product, you end up with a vector. So you take that vector and take the dot product of it with uh, the third vector, and so you end up with a scalar when you're all said and done. And what we're going to show is that that scalar, that number that we end up with, can be used as the volume of a 3D figure called a parallelopiped uh, that is dis defined by those three vectors. And so we can see a parallelopiped in the diagram below. So a parallelopiped is like a rectangular prism, uh, except uh, instead of all of the faces of the 3D figure being rectangles, all the faces are parallelograms. So hopefully we can visualize that the bottom is a parallelogram being defined by the vectors w and v, and then we have the kind of three-dimensional uh, vector uh, u coming up above that plane, uh, defining the faces that are running up the side, and then we have the exact same uh, parallelogram as we have in the base up at the top of our figure up here. So we're going to demonstrate that we can use cross products and dot products to help find the volume of a figure that looks like this. So for any three-dimensional figure like the one that we're working with here, the parallel pipe in, we can find its volume by finding the area of the base and then multiplying that by the height of the object. So in this case, we have a parallelogram for the base. We have to find the area of that parallelogram, and then we're going to have to multiply it by the height of the figure. Now if we go back, Hopefully we recognize that u, the vector u, is not the height. So that's the first thing that we need to make sure to recognize because the height is going to be this straight vertical distance eventually that we're going to have to find. Let's make that actually look like an h. So we've got the area of the parallelogram that we have to find first as the base. Then we're going to have to find what the height of our figure is in order to eventually find the volume. But let's focus on the base to get started. So we need to find the area of the base. So I've sketched out for us here uh, the base of our parallelopiped from the other slide. So hopefully this we can see that this is kind of like a top-down view of that base defined by the two vectors v and w. So if I want to find the area of this parallelogram, I'm going to start by understanding how, to, how I find the area of a parallelogram, which again is going to be base times height. So the base in this case, it's not an area, it's just a length. So that's going to be the magnitude of that vector v. And then I'm going to multiply that by the height. I'm going to use a lowercase h here to indicate that we're operating within this parallelogram. Well, how can I find the area of that, par or the height? Well, I've got this vector w, and if I create a little right triangle for myself here, I can hopefully see that I can find that height by doing the magnitude of w times the sine of this angle right here that's between the two vectors. Now, I'm hoping that this rings a bell for you. I've got magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the sine of the angle in between them. That's the formula for the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors. Magnitude times magnitude times sine of the angle. So that's why we're saying right here that the area of the base of our figure, the area of a parallelogram, can be found by finding the magnitude of the cross product of those two vectors. So step one here is accomplished. We have found the area of the base. Our next task is going to be to find the height of the parallelopiped. So how do we find that height? Well, that's where the third vector comes in. So we can find the height of the parallelopiped by taking that third vector u and multiplying it by the cosine of the angle between u and the cross product. So let's go back to our figure here. So there's our height uh, dotted in for us. So this is perpendicular to the base down here. And so if you'll remember that the cross product of the base vectors u, uh, w and v is going to be perpendicular to that base. So the angle that we're talking about when we say the angle between u and uh, the cross product is going to be that angle right there. 
So if I want to find what that height is, that distance between the top and bottom of our figure, we're going to say that that's equal to the magnitude of u times, this time because the angle is right here, the cosine of theta. So again, this is a different theta, probably should have used a different variable, but you guys are honored, so you'll be able to handle it. Bottom line is, this here is going to be the height of our parallelopiped of our 3D figure. So if we go back, we can see that that's what we have here. So now if I want, so now I have the area of the base, I have the height. So now to find the volume of the figure, I'm going to take the magnitude of the cross product, that's what we have right here, times the height, which is what we have right here, and that's going to give us our volume. Now if we take a little bit closer look at what we have in front of us here in this volume calculation, we have magnitude of a vector times the magnitude of another vector times the cosine of the angle between those vectors. Remember this theta is the angle between the vector u and the cross product vector that's perpendicular to the base. Well, when we're multiplying magnitude times magnitude times cosine of the angle, we're finding the dot product, the magnitude of the dot product, or the value of the dot product. And so here is where that triple scalar product comes in. What we effectively have done is we've taken the cross product of two vectors and taken the dot product of the third vector with that cross product to end up with a single number, a scalar, that represents the volume of a parallelopiped.